Hello um, and welcome to Reading Skills Screencast. Many of you, of course, will think that reading skills are not important or that you will learn them yourself by reading. So really, I'm here today to guide you in the right direction because reading for pleasure and reading for the exam are two very different things. Um, so today, um, we're just going to guide you in the correct direction and because obviously you've learned how to read and today we're just going to develop your reading skills just a little bit more and this, of course, focuses on the exam. So first and foremost, why do you need reading skills? Okay. Um, well, the answer is very simple. You will need to answer comprehension tasks in your exam. So you will need to read, analyze the text, and of course, form your answers. Okay, so that is the main reason why we're doing um, today's screencast. Okay, so let's just jump straight into it. Uh, first things first, we're going to look at the meanings of the text. Okay, uh, you will really need to know explicit and implicit meanings for the exam. So first and foremost, we're going to look at explicit, which means the meaning is straightforward. And of course, underneath explicit definition, you can already see one sentence uh, which actually is very straightforward. So people expect doctors to know about medicine. Okay, everything's straightforward. There's nothing sneaky about that sentence. That means the meaning is straightforward, explicit. Now, the next meaning is implicit. Okay, and that means that it's less obvious, but something is implied in that sentence. Okay, um, so for example, you can see um, you know, a sentence underneath it says, if you come out in a rash and start foaming at the mouth, you should probably think about making a will. Okay, obviously the meaning is implied; it's less obvious, but we can still kind of understand that um by the sentence um it really means that if you start foaming at the mouth and you get a rash, you kind of need to start preparing perhaps for debt, okay, because you're gonna start making a will um and obviously divide up all of your belongings, okay, so that is kind of less obvious. It doesn't say well, you're going to die, um but it is implied that perhaps things aren't good as they seem. Now, what you need to know, of course, is that examiners regard understanding implied meaning as an indication of a higher ability. So that just means that if you can look at a text and find implied meanings and explain them and, of course, support it with quotations and look at the effect that it creates, you're going to get a lot higher grade than somebody who just looks at the straightforward meaning. Okay, so how do we develop this skill? So let's look at it. Okay, um, one way that you can develop this skill is by looking at word choices within a text. Okay, um, when you write about a passage in the exam, it's important for you to analyze the actual language that the author uses. So you really have to comment on language techniques um, that are being used, okay, because really every word that the author has chosen uh, has a meaning behind it and you know it's there for a reason. And really, a couple of words in English language have the same meaning. So, for example, adventure. Is there something, you know, is there another word that means exact same thing? Okay. So, you can see how an author would have kind of crafted uh, one kind of, you know, um, the words to mean something. It really means something and you actually have to look at it. Only by looking at the word choices you can actually um, understand the implicit, the implied meaning. Okay, In the exam you need to make sure that you comment on the word choices that have been used. Now I have a tip for you. You can see that it says Gigi's tip. Um, in the exam you will not have the time to comment on every word in the text. But you need to select a couple and analyze them in great detail. Okay, so why are they used? What do they create? What effect do they have? Okay, so don't just try to analyze every single word. Okay, it's just going to get boring and obviously you're just going to bore the um, examiner. But try and select a couple and then think about the kind of the gr bigger picture. Why are they used? Okay, what do they mean? What do they create? How does it make you feel? Okay, these are the sort of things that you want to um, show the examiner. Now, another way um, that you can show your knowledge and obviously look at the implicit meaning is to look at the language devices. Okay, um, so writers use language techniques to give their writing just a little bit more impact. Okay, um, really, they're there to make you feel something, to make you feel perhaps the same emotion as the author, maybe shock you, and that's just an impact. 
Um, obviously, in the exam, you need to make sure that you find um, devices and write about them, of course, about their effect on the reader, and this should give you a higher mark. Okay, so not only you should start thinking of explicit, implicit, implicit meaning implied, and of course looking at um, word choices as well, but of course you need to make sure that when you do find a device, you can look at that technique, the language technique, um, and think about what it creates as well. Okay, so I have a little mini activity, yes, I know, you're not very fond of them, but they're needed. Okay, so just kind of to make sure that you understand what I mean by language devices. So this mini activity is going to be very, very straightforward. It's not going to take a lot of your time to do, and it's just kind of to pick your brain, if anything. So on a screen, you can see um, some language devices that I've chosen for you. Now, of course, these are uh, quite straightforward, um, and of course, you would have perhaps learned them in primary and secondary school. Um, and there's also, on the left-hand side, is an extract from a very, very famous speech. Okay, um, looking at the extract and imagining that that is your um, that came up in your exam and you have to analyze it. Okay, I would like you to find as many language devices as possible, and remember it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to get something wrong, but it's not okay not to try. So you know I would like you to just look at the techniques, think about if they fit in the extract and then think about perhaps the implicit explicit meanings and uh, think about the effect that this particular extra has on you okay so pause the screencast now and then come back to it when you kind of figure it out or at least found at least three devices okay they remember they can repeat themselves but I want at least three devices okay so pause and come back to it in a few minutes okay welcome back to the screencast I hope that you are able to complete this very short activity. And now we're going to go through um, some of the answers and let's see if you got the same results um, as I did. Okay, so um, you had a very short extract and you had to find at least three techniques. And of course, if you had enough time, you kind of had needed to look perhaps at word choices, why these words are there, what do they create, and how do they make you feel. Now, let's look at it very, very quickly. Um, so, the first some, the first device that really um, st you know, stood out to me was repetition. Okay, there's obviously multiple sentences and multiple phrases that are being repeated. One of them is, I have a dream. Okay, obviously um, this shows that the dream has not yet been reached. Okay, because he has a dream, not had a dream. It's not past tense, it is present tense. So presently, um, you know, Martin Luther King um, has a dream. Okay, it keeps repeating that. He also keeps repeating the sons of former slaves because he repeated several, um, you know, well, the sons of former, okay, slave owners or former slaves. And he keeps repeating that, okay, perhaps drawing the similarities between the slaves and slave owners. Okay, um, also we can see um, sweltering. Okay, sweltering is also repeated several times, and we're going to come back to that in a minute because I've included a superstar challenge for you, and I really just wanted you to look at the implicit meaning of the word sweltering or the word choice. Okay, we're going to return that in just a minute. So another thing that really stood out to me, and remember, I'm not just going to, I'm not going to give you all these devices that are there. You, you can come back to this activity and look at them again and again, and think about all these devices that are there. There's plenty. Uh, another thing that really stuck out to me was the use of the metaphors. Okay, table of brotherhood. Now, there's not just, you know, there's not a table of brotherhood. So, it's going to be formed of brotherhood because all these people are going to sit at this table and they're going to feel like brothers. That means being equal. So, I really like this metaphor that was included. Another as well, another metaphor with the heat of oppression. Okay, and oasis of freedom and justice. Now, I thought they were very, very powerful and hopefully you've um, obviously got these as well. Okay, um, now let's look at the superstar um, challenge. Uh, hopefully you're able to understand what sweltering means. Sweltering means roasting and boiling. Okay, so hopefully you're able to look at that word and think about what does it imply? Why is that word repeated several times? Okay, now to me um, this implies the anger which might uh, be boiling in the blood of the people who want racism to end. 
Okay, um, and obviously this could be a very good paragraph when you are explaining um, this particular word choice um, and implicit meaning. And of course, if you look at the effect, it's going to be even more. Well, obviously it's just going to be even better. Okay, I've also have another tip for you. Remember those helpful tips? Well, here's another. Okay, so remember to choose an example of a device and explain it in detail. Okay, so for example, sweltering, okay, um, you know, I might say, well, that's very emotive. It might be emotive language, okay, because you're, you can feel the boiling and the roasting happening, okay. And remember, you will not get marks if you just state the name of the device. For example, a metaphor is being used. Okay, you're not going to get those uh, marks, and I want you to think of the analysis because it's analysis that will get you the marks. Okay, so obviously do mention the device, but then explain what it might mean. Okay, now one more thing today um, that I would like you to learn, um, I think is also very important when you're looking at nonfiction texts. Um, I would like you to learn GAP. Okay, once again, it is an acronym. Okay, um, and it means genre, audience, and purpose. I think this is very important because, you, and I think you should include this in your work, okay? Because once you can identify the genre, audience, and purpose, um, I think you can this include uh, well this information when you comment about the word choices and language that is used in the text. Um, you know, you can, for example, say, well, this text is persuading the people to um, do whatever. A rhetorical question is being used or rhetorical devices. For example, okay, you give the device and you explain what it is and how it makes you feel. And things that would be very, very important for you to do and look at GAP in more detail. Okay, So let's have a look at it and, um, in a minute detail. So really, GAP this is what it stands for, genre, audience, and purpose. Okay, The genre of the text, it could be a web page, it could be a newspaper, it could be a leaflet, it could be um, a letter. A genre really means a type of something. So you can identify it, but of course, don't just say, well, this is a web page. Yes, it is a web page, or yes, it is a newspaper, but try and include that in your answer. Why is that important? Okay, um, Then audience, who is it aimed at? Okay, it could be for adults only, it could be for mothers if there's something to do with children, it could be for children if it's looking at toys, it could be for teenagers, it could be for men, it could be for women, uh, you know, it could be for general audience, for everyone. And you will need to identify this by looking, um, looking at the language that has been used. Okay, so I think that's very important because you can also include that in your comments about word choices. For example, this word has been used because it is aimed at the audience uh, of such and such. Uh, and obviously, the reader can see this through, and of course, the word that you've uh, looked at. Okay, and the last thing is the purpose. Why is it written? What is the purpose of this text? So, for, for example, as I said already, the you know, maybe a newspaper has been written to persuade you. Okay, maybe a leaflet has been written uh, to inform you of um, the doctor practice that has been opened. Okay, and of course, once again, you can include that in your plenary, or not in your plenary, in your answer. Okay, I'm just skipping ahead and thinking about the plenary that is on the next slide. So hopefully you've understood uh, the gap. Okay, genre, audience, and purpose, and you know how to use it. And of course, if you don't, um, feel free to you know email me or ask me and leave a comment. Um, now we have reached um, the end of the screencast, which means really that's all, folks. Um, and I do hope that you've learned something new today. And if you haven't learned something new, I hope that you have revised the skills that you already have learned. Um, but before you do go, um, you know, and leave you to watch, of course, the screencast over and over again, which of course you will do. I'm only joking. Uh, so, but before you go, um, I do want you to finish the sentence. It could be saying out loud, it could be on a piece of paper, it could be saying to your mom or your dad or whoever else. Um, I want you to say the sentence or write it down. So the most important thing I learned today is dot dot dot. Okay, um, and really think about what did you learn today? It could be a word like sweltering, it could be, you know, gap, or it could be whatever else it might be. Maybe you've learned a new technique or device today, and really it doesn't matter how much you've learned as long as you've learned something and you just didn't really, you just didn't waste your time looking at something, okay? Um, also, I am. I don't think I pointed out in the last screencast, but also um, don't forget to check out my blog, which is chigontite um, dot wordpress dot com. Okay, um, because all these screencasts shall be on there as well, uh, as well as 
all these other cool and important things that you might want to look at. So I hope that you enjoyed watching the screencast and that's really all.